Welcome to Sew and Tell, where sewists from fashion theater and indie sewing bring their different perspectives to the hottest topics in the sewing community. I'm Meg Healy. I'm Kate Zynard. And I'm Amanda Carestio. Today on the podcast, we're talking all about skirts. Summer skirts, winter skirts, best skirt fabrics, favorite skirt patterns, and Meg's recent skirt pattern comparison. We'll each share a, a little something in our Sojo segment, then we'll ask you to share something too. But before we get started, how's everyone doing? I'm doing pretty well. Uh, it's Monday, so I'm a little bleh, but we're holding it together. <laughs> <laughs> How are you feeling, Amanda? You might be feeling nice after your relaxing getaway weekend. Oh, yeah. yes. Um, def- we had a lovely weekend getaway to the mountains. Um, I did contemplate bringing my sewing machine, but decided not to. Which were was you like- actually? You were actually? I was. Was- really? Well, oh. I mean, it, it was kind of like mini vacation, and yeah, no, I true. like sewing when there's not a deadline, and... But it was it was good that I didn't take it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I feel because I came back and I'm like ready to sew a bunch oh, of that's, stuff. That's so, good. So that was that's kind of a lovely um, outcome, I think. Yeah, I'll take it. Lovely weekend. Awesome. How about nice. you, Meg? Well, I have some very, very exciting news to share that happened over the weekend. So exciting. Mm-hmm. Yay! We got another bunny. <gasps> They are, I'm literally looking at them right now. They're almost nose to nose. Like they have bonded so quick. Like it has just been absolutely amazing. Like Burry is just like we were we were just going back and forth. Like, do we want to get another rabbit? You know, maybe Burry's, you know, she wants to just live out the rest of her life alone. But then we were looking at old videos of her and Bunny together Aww. and she just seemed happier. And so we just looked at each other. We're like, okay, we need to get her another pair bond. And we found the perfect, the perfect male pair bond, same age. And he's a bit smaller, but he has really cool coloring. I just didn't want to be reminded of Bunny. Like, I just wanted a new, right. a new yeah. look. Um, and it is just this, he is such a sweetie. Um, his uh, his previous owner came by on and brought him because she wanted to feel comfortable leaving him with uh, him at a home, and so we just watched him for two hours. And she was just so happy that he was going to a good home, and she, she was very thankful and excited about the funny partnership. And it's just Aww. Julian and I have like just spent all like weekend and just staring at them, and just oh, it, they're so cute. So I'm just. Our, our house just feels like whole again. It's just like the bunnies yeah. are happy and jumping around and we're all just good. <laughs> I <laughs> love I, that. I yeah. have two very important questions. Yes. First of all, what is his name? His name Bubbly. Bubbly. <laughs> we call him Bubs or I call him Bubba. Uh, call I call him little love Bubs. Bubba. Yeah. That's so good. Um, yeah. Just, he's just like our little Bubba. He's just super cute. Um, and he's just, he is really bubble. He's a different, he's a, a Japanese Harlequin rabbit. So he's a lot more active and he's jumping around, hopping on everything, adventure So it kind of suits his personality. He's super bubbly. <laughs> so yeah, that's his name. <laughs> awesome. And second question, are we getting pictures in the show notes? Oh, 100 percent they okay, are good. they they're already sharing the same litter bin they eat hay together i think even one time they did a lady in the tramp moment and they got the same piece oh, of hay. oh <laughs> my gosh so definitely pictures uh pictures to come in the show notes so you gotta check that out so i love just, that so yeah. much and awesome. he's even like curious in my studio i was doing some sewing over the weekend and he was Seeing what's up, I go, you're going to see me doing a lot of this. So I like having them close by. So it's been good. And he even hopped up on, like I have a, a ledge on my drafting table and he hopped in between it almost in my fabric bin. He's just all up in everything. It's so cute, but he's not nibbled on anything. So he's just curious. So good. Just good. good. <laughs> well, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Yay. So Yay for new Yay. new additions to the family. That's yeah. So awesome. It's, mm-hmm, Yeah. All right. Well, that was definitely a big weekend then. Um, Indeed. So should we uh, hop into our main topic? Yeah. All right. So sometimes we get a little too into our typical shirts and pants and for some of us cardigans combos and we forget that we have other (laughs) options where a dress might feel too formal. Changing out your pants for a skirt is a great way to change things up. So confession time. I don't wear a lot of skirts, but I used to wear them all the time when I was younger, and I'm not quite sure what changed. 
So let's talk about these neglected, or at least in my case, neglected wardrobe staples. So first off, um, I just told you I don't wear skirts very often nowadays. Do you guys wear skirts very often? I I do, I think. Um, I'm a big like spring and summer skirt mm-hmm. wearer. I like skirts with sandals and like a t-shirt. So definitely definitely my skirts tend to be on the more casual end and definitely with skirts comfort is a big factor mm-hmm. for me and big pockets. Mm, yes, so, pockets. Yeah. So mm-hmm. definitely more warm weather skirt wear over here. How about you, Meg? Yeah, I – well, I actually used to wear a lot of skirts, you know, when I used to go to the club and stuff. I used to <laughs> – like, that was, like, my go-to. I had, like, um, this, like, leather skirt I would wear all the time. Like, and so that was, like, my my going out, uh, usually attire. Uh, I'd wear skirts. Um, and now I've been wearing them so much this summer. I actually used to wear I, – I wear a lot of skirts in the winter, too, because I love, like, tights and boots, like, that kind of look with the skirt. So – I kind of took a break on them, but now this year I've been wearing them all the time. I was literally wearing them one this morning until I cooked bacon and got bacon grease all over. <laughs> oh, it. No. it really flies out of the pan. You got yeah, it does. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, all right, I like them. All right, so Amanda, kind of spring and summer, Meg year round. Mm-hmm. So um, I actually wanted to get into that a little bit. Um, because for me, one of the things about skirts is I don't want to wear them when it's particularly cold. So I wanted to talk about the obstacles to wearing skirts in the colder seasons. Um, and for me, it's straight up that my legs get cold. And while I like the look of tights, my problem is that the skirts always kind of stick to the tights. And then oh. they kind of bunch and they're weird. And I, you have I a solution have a for me. for that. <laughs> Spray hairspray on your on on over the tights. Really? What? Mm-hmm. It works. Because when I was um doing uh when I was um in dance, so we would have a lot of costumes. We'd wear uh, skirts with tights uh, mm-hmm. when we go on the stage, and that was one of our tips. You would spray hairspray over the tights, and it wouldn't cling. Huh. Interesting. And it worked. That's I tried terrific. it. Like, yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, it's a really good tip. Even on like knit tights. Yeah. Really. Huh. I need to get some hairspray. <laughs> test it out. <laughs> yeah, test it out. All right. No, it's been a yeah. long time since I've had a hairspray. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I have hairspray I use twice a year. Um, right. <laughs> along with my mascara. Um, all right. So that's one <laughs> obstacle to wearing skirts in the winter and a solution. So what other what are the other obstacles? What do you guys think? You know, for me, I think it comes down to I don't want to have two tight things around my waist at the same time. Um, So if I've got like the skirt hitting me in the waistband and I've also got tights kind of hitting me tight in the waist, it's just not, um, it's just not super comfortable. I'm sure there's an easy fix and I should probably start with making some more leggings and some like high quality leggings and switching Mm -hmm. up the placement of the waistband. I, I think there's, there's a lot of potential solutions for that. I just know why I haven't done it much in the past. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I find the tights with those the wider bands. Like yeah. I only buy tights. Um, I find actually my favorite tights have been from H and M. They have a really good, like inexpensive uh, tight that has like that really wide band, and I find them so so comfortable and like nice and thick and not uh, sheer for winter tights. But also you can. Um, you can find tights. I know even at dance wear stores, because I used to wear them when I um, I didn't know my dancing days would come up so much in skirts, <laughs> but tights that are foot and they're, they're kind of like a jumpsuit. So because I totally understand what you mean. You have the elastic waist mm-hmm. and it's just like so much digging into yeah. um, the midsection. Um, but sometimes you can find tights that just kind of are full body tights, which I, I loved to, uh, to wear. Mm-hmm. And even if you wear leggings, like you can make like le- like make like a tight like unitard legging too. Like totally, that could t- for sure work. Yeah, and be that salute. And then it'll be a, t- a tank underlayer as well. So you have you know your legs are warm, and then it doesn't cut in the stomach, and then you have like a tank layering piece. Hmm. 
I like that. I think I think that's the trick. It's like yeah. getting some variation with where the tights or leggings hit you mm-hmm. and where the skirt hits you. And that's probably that's probably the easiest solution. I just I haven't I don't know. I don't know that many kind of winter skirt patterns. So I'm happy I'm excited to get to that portion of our conversation. Mm-hmm. Um because I just haven't I haven't branched out. I think I like summer fabrics better but if i mm-hmm. if i were to actually make something in like a winter weight fabric that was a skirt i'd probably be more tempted to wear it mm-hmm. yeah i was actually flipping through um my like skirt i always remind on my website i flip through um all my skirt projects i just categorize them and i'm realizing i mainly make like winter skirt i think the fabrication really comes down to it i have like yeah a faux suede skirt a faux fur metallic skirt i have a holiday skirt i have uh my favorite one is like a a pleated velvet skirt so it's like thicker and so i'm like i don't i actually don't have as many summer skirts i think that's why I made so many this year because that was a really big gap in my wardrobe. So definitely a winter consideration. Yeah. I think it's the fabric. I, I couldn't yeah. see myself wearing a linen skirt in the in the winter. I just think that would – I don't know. Um, or something to like – flower I think the color I think the colors too eh like even yeah if the fabric is really bright I just if for a skirt that's like flowy I just that would be something that I would just not feel right wearing in the winter I need like a nice like dark like plaid skirt or mm-hmm. like a mm-hmm. like a fall floral with like lots of burgundies and evergreens and stuff so that's like a huge like obstacle it's like the fabric for sure not even the weight but the color too even like that's kind of weird to say but yeah yeah no absolutely and that was actually the next thing I wanted to talk about so let's kind of go into that a little bit more um formally um but I, I've, I've heard excitement about two different kinds so Let's actually start with winter because we're already kind of talking about that. Um, so fabrics and patterns for winter skirts or maybe fabrics and styles, um, whatever makes most sense to you guys. Let's start with Meg because she has ideas and thoughts. And Well, honestly, I use not really many patterns. I just cut a rectangle and <laughs> sew an elastic band in it. Like I really don't, the ones that I'm looking at, they're all kind of elasticated skirts that, um, and they're kind of that midi length. I think a good yeah. winter skirt that I like is it kind of comes like below the knee. So even when you're wearing it, you just see boot. But then when you like sit down across your, then you see like you do wear the tights underneath for warmth. But like for pattern sake, I actually don't use patterns really for my uh, for my winter skirts. Huh. <laughs> Just got a rectangle Just and get a rectangle. Go an for it. In. Nice. <laughs> you know, I think that's probably that's probably why I don't make a lot of winter skirts. Is that I really like elasticated waistbands, whether Mm -hmm. it's just flat in the front and elasticated in the back, which I've made several of those. But I feel like winter weight fabrics don't work as well for those because they're just too, when you gather them, you know, if you've got a fabric that's bottom weight, that's heavy at all, it doesn't, if, if you've got too much poof, then it kicks out and it doesn't lay right. So I think that's probably, I think I probably just need to branch out pattern wise um, mm-hmm. and try something different. Cause I tend to, I have a couple of skirt patterns that are my favorite and they're probably more in the like summer skirt category. Um, but I've definitely hacked them a bunch to make them more winter appropriate, either by making them a little bit longer, um, adding a placket, switching up the pockets, um, those kinds of things, but I haven't really ventured out into different kinds of fabrics. But since we were kind of preparing for this conversation, I definitely started thinking about like a a small whale corduroy skirt, mm. you know, oh, something yes. like a, not a super heavyweight corduroy, something that had a pretty fine whale. Um, and I don't know, now I can't get that out of my head and I need a pattern for it. <laughs> <laughs> Which is what always happens. Every time. Oh, Absolutely yeah. every time. Yeah. You know, I uh, I was just sitting here thinking as you were talking about your rectangles, Meg, um, about the one skirt that I have made recently. It was actually kind of more of a cosplay style thing. And um, I kind of prefer my, my skirts gourd, but I did 
almost a, almost the same philosophy. I took my hip measurement and um, then added, you know, a few inches for um, ease. Yeah. And then I um, figured out, I, I divided that by, I think, eight and um, took that, that, that measurement, that, that eighth measurement was the waistband. And then the, and then I just flared it. I, I did one, one right angle straight down. That was the side seam or the center front. And then I flared it out um, about four inches at the bottom. Um, and both of these were kind of midi length. And then I just kind of connected the lines and I did the center front and the center back on the folds. And then the side ones I did as they were and um, seamed them up the side seams and it would go on over my hips. And then I put a little elastic waist in and it was wow. basically what you were talking about, except slightly gored. <laughs> That's so mm -hmm. cool that, yeah, basically made your own like stylized pattern for sure. That's awesome. Yeah, it was, I mean, it wasn't particular. I mean, it's not like, it's not like high fashion. It's very cosplay-ish basic no, no, skirt, no, but, but it's, it's still like, but yeah, it's basic. Like, it's not like a rectangle. Like there's like seams in it and stuff. Shape awesome. to it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Yeah. So there, I had forgotten about that, but that that's in my closet. A couple, a couple versions of that of different lengths. So, oh really? Oh, I, do you have any pictures of them? I want to um, see. God, I don't think I do, but I can probably take some. We'll see. Do you ever do you ever sew the gores in like contrast fabric? No, not yet. I suppose I could if I wanted to make it like party colored or something. Yeah, I would just think I love a, a gored skirt with like the the gores or. A different fabric or even just like a color. I think that's such a pretty color block. That would be the first thing why I would even go a skirt is for a color pop opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I like A-line a skirts and gores are no, a nice, nice way to do that. Um, yeah. Actually, the next thing I need to do is start working on some go days because I really love go days. But uh, oh, yeah. I think that's the next skirt I need in my wardrobe is I need to like, yeah, do some. Ele elevating of just like a, my basic shape because I definitely mm -hmm. like a little swing mm -hmm. to it. I think, you know what? That is totally my next skirt make. It's going to be one with words or bodets or, or both. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, I'm doing the inspiring Alternate. this time. Oh Yay, God. me. <laughs> I know. Yay. Plus, you never know what all You happen. never do. <laughs> all right. So you were talking about uh, some velvet, some faux suede. Um, I feel like some wools would probably be nice. Some light, lighter weight wools, not like super heavy stuff. Mm -hmm. um, what else is good in the winter, do you think? Um, I think denim too is good. Oh, yeah. Denim. We mm -hmm. haven't really, I feel like we've been talking largely about like woven skirts. And yes. I think for winter, it, you know, you could go the knit route with something that was. Probably less stretchy, but it, like a Ponte, mm -hmm. I think, could be nice for something totally. a little bit more form-fitted um, and also, like, pretty warm. Yeah. Even a sweater knit. Yeah. For sure could work. Like, a Fun. snuggly sweater, like, skirt would be so cute. Yeah, super cute. Even if it wasn't that tightly woven, as long as you lined it, it could be really cute. Yes. yes. Ooh, maybe a contrast uh -huh. lining, so it's kind of, you know, peeking out in a different color. Oh, uh, that that's a great <laughs> idea. I, I didn't even think of that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't know where this is coming from, you guys. Maybe I'm just tired. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, and even like canvases can work. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, like twills and all sorts. Yeah, anything you would make pants out of, you can you can totally skirt it too. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Skirt it. Skirt it. Skirt it. <laughs> I think we just found the title of our episode. Oh, geez. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, what about summer? What do you do differently in the summer then? I feel like the beauty of summer skirts is that you can kind of make them out of anything. Totally. I mean, I just feel like you can do quilting cottons. You can do, mm -hmm. um, I mean, you could do decorator weight. I've used some thrifted fabric that I'm fairly certain was supposed to be used for curtains. And I made a really <laughs> lovely skirt out of it. It had like a little texture to it. Um, I mean, I definitely go linen 
I go gingham yeah. in the summer. Um, but I feel like, yeah, you can just kind of turn anything into a skirt, which is kind of yeah. awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, even like chiffons. I love doing like uh, – I have like a chiffon skirt cover-up and even you can wear – um, it over a bunch of stuff. And yeah, basically that's such a good point, Amanda. Like anything goes in this summer. Yeah. You could even, yeah, just like a piece of fabric. You don't even have to sew it. You just tie it around your waist and ba-doom, you got a summer skirt. <laughs> totally. <laughs> totally. And I love um, Meg, your Niagara skirt design. Yes. Was that, so that was, it's a wraparound skirt that has mm-hmm. kind of a waterfall hemline. Yep. And a tie. And was that – that was knit, right? Yeah, it was a knit. Yeah. Uh, it was like a pre – like kind of uh, had a pleated treatment, but it was mm-hmm. – it's stretchy. I, I'm surprised actually how much I've worn that skirt this summer. I've worn it so, so much. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's it's a really good, really good skirt. I need to make another one for sure. I want to try and make – you know what? Maybe I could try making a fall one. I have a – Oh, I could, fun. Like, work in like – I have this skirt that I bought uh, a bunch of years ago, and I love it. And it's like a blank – it's like a wool kind of – it looks like a blanket skirt, but it's kind of wrapped, and it kind of just looks like a blanket's wrapped around you with like a cool zipper. And I want to try that with the Niagara skirt. I have some um, – a bunch of some Pendleton wool that's mm. it's, uh, it's a little secret project we're working secret on that we're project. super excited. But I have some leftover. I'd love to make like a wraparound um, wool skirt. I think that would be really pretty with boots because you could see the boots yeah, in the front. Yeah, the high, then, low. Yeah. Hem, love oh, that. And then you have like uh, that thing that you were talking about, Amanda. I know we keep going back to winter skirts. Just, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we have – it's August now. We, it's we, August. We're summer sewing. We need to halt <laughs> <laughs> but with um that has like a you use the fab like um or a contrasting even fabric so you don't have the bulk of like two more layers of the fabric and then elastic right. and then all that that bulk too at the waistline but um another thing that uh I forgot to mention when you were talking about that what I have done with my fall um elastic waist skirts is I find actually um uh what do they call like fashion elastic so even the elastic is just the waistband itself so you Mm. don't have to case it because I found I had this like green elastic and um you can buy like really pretty elastics that you don't need to even cover so that's what my kind of solution is to reduce bulk on elastic that's a great Mm -hmm. idea yeah winter skirts yeah I love that that kind of elastic it's so soft (laughs) oh I know I know (laughs) Um, I do have a few favorite patterns that I wanted yes, to please. mention um, for summer skirts. Yeah. And I think I think if you do make some adjustments, they could, these could totally work for more winter um, wear. I love the Justine skirt by Ready to Sew. It's actually a free mm. skirt pattern and it's got a placket, these really cute fold over um, pockets. And that one is just a straight waistband, but I actually altered it to have the elasticated waistband. I just took a little bit of width out of the back. And, um, I love that skirt. It's definitely, it's kind of that midi length. Um, I'm a big, big fan of the Clio skirt by made by Ray, which has, um, a front flat front waistband, and the skirt is slightly gathered in the front. The back is elasticated and it's got these big scoop pockets that I just love. And I've made that, I've made that skirt in, um, mystery home decor fabric. (laughs) I've made it in silk knoll. Um, and I've made it, I made it in quilting cotton and I've made it in eye cat. And I just, I love it because I think it is really easy to dress up with pattern selection, but it's also like probably the skirt that I reach for the most in like a casual setting with like a t-shirt. Mm. Um, I love the axle skirt by Megan Nielsen patterns. Oh yeah. Um, that's more of like a pencil skirt. You'd sew it up in more of a stable knit. And um, I just, I really, I like that skirt with kind of more of a boxy style top um, just to kind of balance out the silhouette. And it's just, and it's also super comfortable. Like knit skirts mm-hmm. are just oh, yeah. knit skirts. next level oh, comfort. So comfy. Um, and what I've been doing recently, which I will probably I'll share on the So Intel Instagram yes. feed, is I have been um, I have been chopping up 
all of my dresses from last <laughs> summer um, and turning them into skirts, which I I don't know. I think really when we were talking about refashioning a couple weeks ago, that just kicked me off on this journey and I've done it to two dresses and um, and I've it's, you know, it really started out with me not wearing the dresses as much this summer for whatever reason, but really loving the fabric that I had used. So I've been like chopping off the bodice, folding over the top, making a little casing for elastic and then just wearing the thing like 15 minutes <laughs> later and I've been loving it. So definitely not anything complicated, but all in the pursuit of like wearing things I've made. And if they're not wearing them, if I'm not wearing them, then reworking them into something I will wear. So I like a skirt hack. <laughs> nice. Very yeah, I was, much. I was, yeah, I was hoping you'd bring that up. I was like, yeah. you've done so many, like, yeah, chopping off the dresses. That's yeah. So <laughs> I know. I hope I don't regret it later. But Do you I make the, the tops into tops or you just discard the top? You know, they're usually too short at that point. Uh, but my daughter, um, my daughter likes to wear them around with like <gasps> leggings and oh, shirts cute. underneath. Yeah, they look like little like Western vests, oh. and she's very proud of them. Um, but yeah, that is so pretty cute. funny. Oh. Uh, um, the other thing that I've done quite a bit um, is if I found like I found a pants waistband that I really loved, and that's the um, Emerson pants by True Bias. And I have so I used the waistband and basically the pleating and the pockets of those pants to make um, two skirts that I was wearing a bunch about That's two summers really good ago. Idea. Yeah. Cause it's, I mean, all you do is you, you borrow the waistband again, that one has like the, um, the flat waistband in the front elasticated in the back and, and pleats and pockets and you just turn it into a skirt. It's pretty easy. Nice. Yeah. I've never thought about doing that before that. Like that is genius. That's a great idea. Cause so, yeah, there are some, like even when I did my, we'll get to this later. My skirt comparison, some waistbands I liked better than like it was. They, yeah. It was just you know that perfect width. Mm -hmm. It was just right. It, like it didn't twist. But I yeah, never thought about like changing them up to swap patterns. Like maybe even if you have a skirt waistband that you like, you can put that on pants. You know, totally. That's such a good idea. <laughs> Uh oh, so uh -oh. much inspiration. <laughs> All right. I know. Well, um. I wanted to jump really quickly back a little bit and talk about the transitional seasons um, for spring and fall. Uh, do you guys do anything different for spring and fall skirts or are we just, you know, saying, look at the weather and decide whether to wear your winter or your summer skirt? <laughs> yeah, I think when it comes to skirts, I'm, it's either winter mm -hmm. or summer for me. And then with the idea that I'll probably layer up with leggings or tights or sandals or, you know, and, and make pick other things that kind of fit best with the temperature mm -hmm. that day. Yeah. I have some skirts that can work for, um, in between too. Like I find denim skirts can work for summer mm -hmm. and fall. Good and point. even like my, um, if you've, uh, if you, any of you've turned tuned into style revive yet my free episode is is up that I make a denim wrap skirt and like that totally I could wear in the summer and the fall so for cute. sure so mm -hmm. definitely denim skirts like anyone that I have can definitely be tra transitional and I also have this one one of my favorite skirts that I've made from actually like a, a pattern is this kind of retro Berta style one it's number 113 from the 06 2019 issue and I made it in this like really bright yellow. Uh, I think it was, what kind of fabric was that? It was like a thicker, uh, a thicker twill, um, but it was in like a vibrant yellow. And so that kind of summery color lended itself to summer, but I've also worn it, you know, with dressed up for fall with like a tucked in like black sweater and I, mm -hmm. and it has like tor contrasting like tortoise uh, buttons. I like a button up front skirt. Uh, yeah. The, the, Me too. The nice contrast button. So that's kind of one of my favorite, yeah. favorite styles for sure. And yeah, I guess it just depends. Um, but I would never wear, yeah, like my super summery lightweight ones in the over, over tights and then my wool ones in the, <laughs> yeah. I guess, yeah, denim, yeah. denim is, 
Never Denim's goes traditional. out. You can always wear your sure. denim. <laughs> I don't know. I kind of like. I kind of like the look of a a fairly straight, like knee length tweedy skirt um, for the fall. I just feel like that kind of yells fall. And then you know, if it's cold, it gets the tights, and if it's not particularly yeah, cold, you know. it doesn't get the tights, and it can be kind of that that middle of the range thing there. I say this even though this is not something I would probably ever wear because that's not a good look on me, <laughs> but I really like it on, you know, models and stuff. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, and the Chanel yeah. fashion show is a great place to see a nice tweet. <laughs> oh, nice yes. Chanel. Yeah. Oh, we must be getting close to our fall fashion um, well, episode. Yeah. Well, I guess um, I need to – I know there was some – I know, I guess it was in the, well, the shows that would be showing fall next, um, no, I'm trying to, no, those shows oh, no, they in went, February. they so went they in like were, February, right? Yeah, yeah, no, that's what I'm thinking, yeah. So I don't know what's happening with the shows coming up in September. Yeah. I would just, with oh, the, yeah. the pandemic, like, because, you know, fashion show, everyone's kind of crammed in. So yeah. I, I'm curious to see what they're going to do. I, I heard some designers are doing, um, you know, kind of remote shows where it's just kind mm-hmm. of the catwalk and they just film it. So I'm, I would be curious to know kind of coming up, but definitely a fall one. I'll have to go look back at the, um, remember what all my favorites were yeah. from the, <laughs> from the, yeah, we're going to have to get that one sure. on the list. I don't think it's yeah. on there yet. All right. Sorry. That was a, that was a no, detour no, there. I don't know what, mm-hmm. what about early August is apparently making me think about fall. Yes, I do. Okay. Um, <laughs> So uh, one last thing, Amer- <laughs> Amanda talked about some of her uh, TNT skirt patterns. Uh, I know, Meg, you said you mostly do um, just self-drafted. Do you have any TNTs you want to talk about? Or Well, I will share my, um, in the next segment, I okay. definitely found a new TNT. So we- We'll wait on that one then. We'll and- wait on that. And I, like I said, I don't do a lot of skirt wearing, but I do have one very favorite skirt. It's from um, SBCC and they do, um, they have a, it's a knit uh, maxi length with kind of a mermaid flare at the bottom. And um, I have it in a knit rayon and I've actually, I have some more knit rayon waiting for me to make another one. It's just super comfy. It's, I don't know if it's actually elegant, but I feel elegant when I'm wearing it (laughs) and it makes me very happy and I love it. So um, I will link that in the show notes. That it is cute, so cute, right? Was did you make one for your uh, Vienna capsule? Did you make a skirt for that? No, I, I actually remember. skipped skirts because I oh. didn't want to. I didn't want to have to walk around Vienna either wearing tights or, oh, um, right. or having my thighs rubbed together because that is another one of my problems. Um, so I had I I did have yeah. a dress, um, but other than that, everything I wore was pants. And a, t- a tip that I have. I'm yes, tell us more tips. tips. Today. <laughs> Yay, bring it. So um, that's definitely an issue that I have. That's why I would I was been so hesitant wearing especially a lot in of, the summer uh, skirts. Is you know, the yeah mm-hmm. the the thigh rub. Um, and so I took the Loveland leggings and I cropped them off, and I made um, out of white spandex and I made a con- like a t- control top band. So I cut them lower and then I like doubled it and folded it over to make these kind of biker shorts that I wear um, mm-hmm. underneath all my skirts. And I didn't hem the edge like I, I um, on the the lower seams like I tucked my surging back in so it kind of gave that seamless look and without the surging unraveling so there are a lot, I have these like biker shorts that are so comfortable like my they're breathable and they're nice and smoothing and they like tuck everything in and so that's what I wear nice that's a skirts. good idea that's yeah a great I, I'll tip. do that every once in a while but yeah, it's just like a li- yeah mm-hmm when on those, like, kind of like, or for if I'm, you know, going out or if I'm just running at the grocery store, I mean, I don't really, right. really care. But <laughs> if it's, yeah, if it's a long walk or something, I just feel like wearing one of my nice skirts for sure, just like a, a little pair of shorts underneath always yeah, feels for good. Sure. <laughs> Especially mm-hmm. windy days, eh? Oh my yeah. God. I, in this city too, I, I mean, I probably don't look as good as Marilyn Monroe when I'm standing over a subway grate and my skirt goes flying up. I'm just like, ah. that's happened to me so many times living in yeah, the city. Yeah, for, for biking too, I feel like that's a good option because oh, totally. 
Totally. Definitely. Yeah. A, I know a lot of sewists who bike as well. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, because skirts are hard to – definitely hard to – and being conscious of – Yeah. Um, yeah, of that. So I definitely um, – I actually kind of avoid skirts biking, but I definitely could wear those when mm-hmm. I'm biking. I didn't think of that. Totally. So, yeah. Wow. I right. So I, yeah, I know. Skirts. I didn't expect this conversation <laughs> to be like so – so inspiring skirt wise for me uh but let's go ahead and take a break and then let's hear about meg's tnt pattern yeah so i was on the search for the perfect casual summer skirt pattern with an elasticated waist and pockets so i decided to make three and compare them pattern comparisons can be great for helping to determine fit sizing and proportion when future pattern shopping for yourself and others. I know I was inspired to do one after I saw a jeans one online. I find that super helpful. And I thought, you know what? I can, yeah, I can do one of these myself. And I feel like it's not only helpful for myself, but for others too. So there is a post up on sodaily.com where you can kind of see um, all three skirts that I made. So I tried to find skirts that were elasticated waist, had a either with a drawstring or not, and with pockets, and that you could just woven and pull on, and I made them all in linen, because I wanted to find that kind of go-to skirt pattern, and I definitely mm-hmm. found that, and it was just kind of the one that, since I made them all, I've, like, worn it, like, so much. I was, like, literally wearing it this morning. It's just so comfy, and it's cute, and um, Super cool. So have you guys ever done uh, – um, before I talk about uh, more in depth about the certain skirts, have you guys ever done like a pattern comparison, like picking a style of silhouette and just going and searching, finding three different patterns from companies and making them all just to kind of see which one you'd like best? I have not done one like formally, but I love it when people do that for yeah. me. <laughs> um, oh, <yeah>. <laughs> I <laughs> think that um, I think it was Kylie in the machine did one on elastic waist pants and oh, she did a couple yes. of um, mm. kind of recent releases. And I think it was it's so helpful to just mm-hmm. see the variation in the silhouettes see the variations in how different designers kind of approach sizing and fit for that Mm -hmm. silhouette. And then kind of like, I think you can really make a super informed decision about what's going to be best for you based on what you want and how you want it to fit. So Mm -hmm. I just, I find them super, super helpful, especially, you know, if you're looking at sketches of pants patterns and they they may look very similar, but there are all these mm-hmm. these new nuances mm-hmm. um, once they're kind of sewn up um, in different fabrics. I think that's another part of it too is just seeing yes. how you know different patterns work with different fabrics um, and kind of comparing them from there. So I I love it when people do them, especially if you're looking at a sketch. Um, yeah, the sketch may not necessarily be designed to really show all of the like the sketch is the the um designer's idea of what it looks like but it's their mm-hmm. idea of what it looks like on whatever their sketch and croaky looks like exactly it, it doesn't necessarily have like and of course if you're looking at it and you're like okay so this is on a you know sort of fashion style um design okay this might tell me what the size four is going to look like but it's not going to tell me what the size 16 is going to look like um and so, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Also, I find these are so helpful just seeing – because you can look up different patterns on different – you know, if you just search a certain pattern and see it made on different body. But to see the same body right. in different yeah, exactly. brands, like that is just so visually – like you can see, oh, look, like that, you know, that certain size or, or brand looks, you know. And if you, if you find uh, a fo- – you know, you find um, – a sewist who you follow who has a similar body proportions to you. I know, Amanda, you ha- have um, that. I love that movement where pe- sewists are putting their, their measurements in their Instagram yes. po- profiles to find you what your so body. So helpful. Your, what, did, what do they call it? The, your like body double or. Something yeah, like you, that. yeah, I think it's your body your, double. Yeah, your your tw- your twin, your sewing <laughs> body twinsy or something. Yes. Yeah, I love that. Uh, I still have to do. I I've always been meaning to do that. Uh, I'm gonna put mine in there because I just I think that's super helpful. Oh, so, totally. Because you can't tell anything on oh Instagram gosh, about no. proportions or you know no. like how the photograph was taken. Um, because I, you know, it just I feel like it's really really hard 
to get any sense mm-hmm. of um, scale on Instagram. Mm-hmm. So those, I think those proportions really help. And I've, I've used the, that quite a bit. Like if I see someone mm-hmm. has made something that I'm interested in, I'll check and see if they have their measurements listed oh. so I can kind of get a, a sense of yeah. um, how it'll work for me. But I love that. So helpful. Mm-hmm. I know I finally got Julian to take uh, photos of me kind of from upwards. He's, he used to like do like the down up. I'm like, you can't, you can't shoot me like leaning down and up. You got to go yeah. from up down. <laughs> I'm like, well, you can see like everything from the down up. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Mark, so uh, Mark <laughs> tilts the can holds the camera like at his face and then tilts it forward. And I'm like, don't, don't do that. If you need to get further yeah. down, don't do that. Take it down. <laughs> yes, Actually yes. It, it's bend. like drop your know, hands, but don't bend. It's... The, but it's it's like impossible. I've I've started taking my uh my little camera stand outside and and taking delayed shot pictures because he just he can't he can't. And I love you, Mark. I do. I love you, but you acknowledge you're not a great photographer. He does. <sighs> I'll need to get you an eight-year-old because oh, eight-year-old I know. Ruby takes perfect the... perfect height. Eight-year-olds are so, <laughs> so useful. Yeah, she's <laughs> they I are. Oh. Yeah, she charges a lot though. So there's that. oh, d- <laughs> yeah, we couldn't afford her. You know, yeah, you can't I afford do her. Do have an eight-year-old, <laughs> but she doesn't have opposable thumbs, and she's real short. So, um, yeah, Maggie's eight. <laughs> oh yeah, kitty cat. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking, I was like, I don't Mm-mm. think bunnies can take photos. But I've been no. wanting to get, um, you can get like the blue, um, Bluetooth, like a clicker with a tripod. Because yeah. I hate like taking the, um, you do the the timer and then running and then you got to do it in time. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I want to get one of those like clickers uh, for sure. Um, so yeah. Anyways, photographing <laughs> our skirts coming up. <laughs> <laughs> So for my skirt, I first made the um, the Donovan skirt by Helen's Closet. Then I made the LB uh, by LB Textiles, the Lolly skirt, which is actually a free download. And then a Berta Style skirt because I just had to include that yeah. one of those in there just because I'm, you know, knowing my size for so long there. I made uh, one from the April 2015 issue number 127. And I wanted to make them all in the same fabric. So um, I got all linen and kind of the same weight, uh, just different colors because I wanted, you know, to see a bit of a uh, bit of separation between them. Um, oh, actually, no, I didn't make the, the lol. I got linen for it, but it actually took a lot more fabric than I thought it did. So I actually, I had this kind of more uh, drapey crepe for that. I forgot. I bought linen for it, but I didn't actually use it, but it was the same color. So yeah. And it was just interesting to see, like they all had the same, um, pocket shapes and they all had elasticated waistbands and similar, similar lengths, um, and sil and silhouette ish type things. But I found that, um, like the Berta one had like a smaller waistband. And then I found out that I just didn't like that as much of a smaller waistband. I really liked the the width of the Helen's Closet um, Donovan mm-hmm. skirt waistband. I think overall that was – that's definitely my new go-to one. That definitely kind of oh, nice. won this round. Yeah, that I'm obsessed with that skirt. It's just like the pockets are – are deep enough without being too deep. Like it was the perfect hem length and the waistband was just like the perfect, the perfect weights, um, perfect, uh, width, sorry. (laughs) Waistband was the perfect width and yeah. And I liked the drawstring element of it Mm -hmm. and I just felt that it just fit and looked really nice. And it was also really easy to sew in the lolly skirt. I did like the flowy nature of it, but I don't think I would sew it again because you had to gather it mm-hmm. before you um, installed the weight, which I, the ease of an elasticated waist skirt is <laughs> I don't have yep. to do any gathering. Yes. So I don't think that I would make that again. And I, the Berta, I like how Berta does like a, things a little a little bit different. Uh, so they had kind of gathered pockets, which I thought were interesting. Um, so I probably would make that one again. I found it and it had a hem facing with slit. It was definitely more unique, but I didn't like the waistband. It was a bit too thin and I would, the pockets just seemed a little bit 
too high on my hair. I would definitely play around with that. I was thinking of even like taking those pockets and putting them mm-hmm. on the Donovan skirt or something. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah. it was just really interesting to see. I listed out all of the sizes that I, I sewed them all in in the uh, in my post, but it was just super interesting. And I kind of judged it by which one mm. am I reaching for when for the purpose of just kind of uh, going out and about kind of around my house while still like, you know, looking cute. And definitely the Donovan skirt did that for me. I felt felt the best in it. And that's the one I would definitely make again. So it was just kind of, yeah, interesting. And I totally (laughs) want to do more. (laughs) Totally want to do more. So I wanted to ask you guys, so if you were to do like your own kind of skirt comparison for like an everyday casual skirt, what would be some of the features that you would need um, for yours? I don't know what it is about skirts, but I feel like I don't know. There are, maybe there's just more variety in pockets for skirts Mm -hmm. than there are for pants. So I did, I mean, I was checking out your posts and I loved all of those skirts on you. I think they're all super successful. Oh Um, yeah, for sure. And, um, but I do, I, I love, I love a big pocket. I like (laughs) comfortable waistband. Mm -hmm. Um, I, it is interesting that there aren't as many button up, um, placket yeah. skirts out there. I mean, it's a super easy hack to do and I've done mm-hmm. it plenty, but, um, but I do, I do find that, um, that usually pocket waistband and placket are kind of my, my the my three mm-hmm. kind of favorite oh, like features of skirts. Pocket. Yeah. Yeah. Like a front. Yeah. Pocket. Yeah. Cool. I think <laughs> okay, I guess go probably days. not go days but definitely <laughs> gores or s- something that causes yeah. it a okay, that gives yeah, it a a um a, a sort of an a-line shape i would definitely be looking for that that bit of flair because like i said um pencil skirts and straight skirts not so great on me um and i think i agree that i would like some sort of pockets um even if they're just big enough to fit my phone i get irritated when I have to walk around and can't put my phone in my pocket. And um, I agree, some sort of comfortable waistband, probably elasticated. Um, So yeah, pretty, pretty similar to you guys. I think I would be looking a little bit more at my preferred silhouette. But um, yeah, but I could definitely go either way on woven or knit. Um, Yeah. And Mm-hmm. You know, and I think that woven and knit skirts get that flare shape in different ways, and that's totally fine. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Cool. I also, and, I think oh, I, yeah. I do really love drawstrings on skirts. I, I think it's like a, it's a nice way to break up and make an elastic waistband a little bit more interesting, I think. Uh-huh. It, it might, it's probably a little bit more casual. Um, to have the a drawstring like that, but I, I don't know. I just I think it does kind of dress up a an elastic waistband. Yeah, that's I I was actually surprised because I'm usually not a fan of drawstrings, but I was like, you know yeah. what? I'll sew it to the pattern. I didn't want to, you know, for this the post sake, I didn't want to skip on too many details of the pattern. Mm-hmm. And I was surprised how much I I liked it. I was you know thinking, oh, maybe I'll just omit the drawstring, but that was that's one of my favorite features yeah. of the skirt. So um, I know it's it's for me, it's just that extra step of yeah you know, the buttonholes and stuff. But it does mm-hmm. like elevate it for sure. And yeah, that was. For, yeah, one of my favorite details, um, and especially the the drawstring that they um, like the length is really long, and the and I like the, the kind of oh like it's a really the really long bow, which I kind of like. It's kind of it's just a cool detail that I like. I was surprised how long it was when I was sewing it, but I really like it how long it is and what a big bow and how the they come down so much almost to the hem. It just I, I really like it. Yeah, good point. Nice. So do we usually do pattern comparisons for more wearable, like casual garments? Or could we do one for like, I was just thinking like, a, it's I guess it's more hard to do one for specific, like a fancier dress because sometimes they can be more unique to 
the design or the pattern mm-hmm. company. So is it yeah. because it's more about kind of comfort and general fit for every day? So do you think that kind of more casual garments lend themselves to kind of a comparison post better? I do. Um, I think that that putting the in, unless you're just doing straight up muslin, I think do putting the effort into something like really fancy or yeah. or special occasion it's it's like what what is the point of spending all of that time and yeah. all of that fabric when you're really just trying to figure out what you like best mm-hmm. um whereas if you're doing it with something casual well maybe you like the donovan skirt the best but that doesn't mean you won't wear the birda style skirt totally sometimes. oh my gosh um, no, yeah for sure and it's so it's, I, I feel like yeah. it makes more sense to do it um for casual things that you want to have yeah. several of in your closet as opposed to something that you really only oh, need one idea. or two of in your closet mm. yeah i i think the like the best part of a pattern in comparison is that you figure out which one you want to make more of and that is mm-hmm. usually you know, a more casual thing. But again, like I, I think all of those skirts that you made were super successful and they do, mm-hmm. you know, it. I think that's like, that's an amazing thing about garment design is that those are very, there are some parts and pieces of those designs that are very similar, but um, they have, they, they mm-hmm. have a different vibe once they're sewn yeah, up. And I know. so you should just have them all in your wardrobe and you should have a lot of all of them. Yeah. That's that's my focus and <laughs> yeah. my my plan when it comes to elasticated waists. Yeah. Yeah, because you can just see, like, if you, you would even see the line drawing, you're like, I don't even know the difference totally. between, like, some of these skirts. But then they really, like, they do have a different, like, look and feel when you when you make them, even, like, a very similar uh, fabric. So it's just so cool. Um, and so I really want to do more of these. So please let us <laughs> know what you want. Um us to do I know uh, me definitely I want to do like a jumpsuit one like those jumpsuit ones that are there's so many jumpsuits that are coming they're like kind of a looser like casual yeah. uh, I actually just bought the the new Mimi G Tiffany one and I'm so excited to make it so I kind of want to find some other ones and do mm-hmm. another comparison of oh that would be a good one to compare with the Amy jumpsuit by yes. Classic Core Patterns yes. That would be that would be so, so fun. A, yeah, that would be fun. I think it's it's hard for me to do pattern comparisons because even if I'm making it for the first time, I just can't help but like hack it <laughs> in some small way. <laughs> like I have a really hard time making it the way I'm supposed to make it. I'm just <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah, but but I so don't, helpful but... for other sewists. Yeah. Uh-huh. Now, I would like also like to do my own jean just for the sake of just mm-hmm. for me n- finding that kind of um, you know fly front classic jean jean ones for for my body. I would like just like on a personal journey to do that one, and even if I did, I would definitely share it. But I would like to do one for me or like a trouser pants or like a more fitted, mm-hmm. um, not you know a loose uh, and a loose elastic case waist pants. So I'd like to do one of those too, but. Yeah, which so if helpful. You were to, yeah, if you were to do one, Kate, like what would you do it on? What garment would you do a comparison of? I don't know. Probably, <laughs> probably some, probably some sort of top, either a, um, either some sort of flowy tank top, or maybe some like three quarter length sleeve uh, tunic top, something like that. You know, I've seen some helpful ones with woven tanks because yes. even though like woven tank is a yeah. very simple garment, like there's they a lot can... that goes into mm-hmm. it. The, the mm-hmm. curve of the, the um, dart location strap. and yes. the so deck. many, oh, so many little things. Um, so I think that would be helpful. Also, um, Meg, if you're shopping for next ideas, <gasps> I think it would Always. be awesome. I've, I've seen a few, um, but t-shirt pattern comparisons because i think that's another thing that people you know you search and search and search until you, you know find what? your favorite i'm actually one. wearing one right now I, um, yeah you can see me this is one um but i find the sleeves were a little long for a t-shirt so i want to do one of those because i want to know what like because i always am needing kind of basic white yeah t-shirt because i always get them dirty and then i they're never i can never get the stains quite and i yeah. always just wanting a new one if and then i like 
want to dye those ones. But yeah, a t-shirt <laughs> one would be so good. So helpful. Yes. Yeah. Really so helpful. So just saying, you should probably I, you do know that what? One. I think I should do that one next. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'm going to do that one next. Let's. Let's put it on the cow. <laughs> put it on the cow. I love because it. I just, I just got, I have a bunch of um, knit fabric that I want to turn into t-shirts. So that's perfect. So perfect. Mm-hmm. Great. Wow. You have a well, lot that was to say fun, about you guys. skirts. I know. So like, many skirts. I was like, this will be a short episode. And now <laughs> here we are. <laughs> I know. I love it. I love it. love it. Well, let's let's talk Sojo. I think mm-hmm. I have a feeling it's going to be skirt related. Yeah. Um, this this go around. But this is the portion of the show that is my favorite. We talk about our sewing inspiration. So let's just go around the virtual table. How about you, Meg? Um, well, actually, I'm doing um, – I'm sewing a lot of classic shirts right now. So I'm working on mm. something, uh, filming how to make just like your classic white button-up shirt. And it's actually kind of fun to um, go back into like just that basic sewing of doing like the, the pleats on the cuff and the classic collar with the stain mm-hmm. like that kind of – and so – I've been really having a lot of fun with it. And I think I'm going to make Julian one next. I have his in a chambray from um, Robert Kaufman. I have a men's shirt cut out for him. So I'm in like classic shirt making kind of mode right now, even though it's for filming. Like I'm really enjoying it. And I'm going to, I want to make like a t-shirt version too uh, of like a button up t-shirt. So I'm in kind of that mode right now. Nice. I love it. I love button ups. I like, Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is. I love the process. I kind of have to be in the right frame of mind because they're very structured a lot of steps but i love sewing collars i love it no i don't like wearing them too bad but (laughs) (laughs) oh my goodness how about you kate all right well i'm still kind of slumping a little bit um so i have my pile of linen staring at me and i just recently realized that i haven't started my uh, delphi dress yet although i did actually last two weekends ago i found my bias tape and i hadn't cut new bias tape so yay me um so i can do that now if i want to um but what's actually like getting to me have you uh have you guys ever watched the umbrella academy on netflix (gasps) literally julian was watching that this morning yes so the new season just dropped a couple days ago we watched six episodes yesterday yeah okay okay so so you're up on this yes but it's taking place in this in the 63 i think right now and but it's in dallas so everything's still kind of not quite like full mod yet it's all very like late 50s and it is killing me it's just killing me i'm looking at it i'm like i need to pull out my gertie books and start making mm-hmm. myself some like Perfect. vintage 50s dresses because oh my god everybody looks so it's, cute did you fun fact the oh. one um Diego, the character, lived in our building while they, they filmed it in Toronto. So he actually really? lived in our building while filming it because they filmed the first season around the corner from our our place and um, and he, they really liked the area. So yeah, it was all filmed in Toronto. Oh, well, so we, awesome. We, I'm going to yeah. come visit you when they're filming season three. I know. Yeah, it's a great <laughs> Just, show. I, but yeah. Cool, yeah. That I love that show. That is amazing cool yeah. i'm gonna have to check it out yeah oh yeah do so uh, yeah it, it's not gonna make a lot of sense to you unless you watch the first season and yeah. that one takes place there. in 19 in, in, two, in 2019 so but uh yeah it's still that, really good yeah it's really good it's a really good show and um yeah d- not for kids don't don't have your kids watch it good to okay. know <laughs> good to know <laughs> Well, I have to, I have to say, like, I I think I've been sewing a bunch for work as well, um, prepping some samples for an upcoming sew along. And I'm definitely like, I'm having a little athleisure moment and I kind of like it. And I think it's, um, I think it's related to my new skating hobby. (laughs) So I've been thinking about, I don't think I'm, I'm going to be as organized as I need to be to actually make a capsule, but I have been thinking about the fact that I kind of I want to keep skating through the fall and mm-hmm. I probably need some more sweatshirts um and warm layers for that. So and I I think you guys I think I'm going to have like some neon green and <gasps> lime green oh, in the yeah. mix. Oh, so yeah. I'm going to venture venture out of my neutral territory just a little bit. 
Um, a little pop but, here and there. Yeah, a little pop. But I, but I'm kind of, I'm kind of enjoying it. It's kind of nice. fun. It's kind of fun to just to you know do something different um, and think about yeah your your take on athleisure. Mm-hmm. And this when it's specifically for like a use too, like I yeah. find that's kind of fun to, it's just something different. Totally. Like, oh, I'll just kind of just wear this every day, but you, you know, I'm going to, I need this to function the way that I need it to for this certain sport that I'm doing. I think mm-hmm. that's really fun too. And I have to tell you, um, I, I follow now a whole bunch of people who <laughs> sew and skate nice. <laughs> and there's a lot of people and really? people are making such cool things. Like they're, um, if you have suede skates um oftentimes you can purchase them sometimes they come with them but this little cap that goes over the toe of the skate to protect it when you're stopping and you can make those yourself it's like vinyl little um grommets and you lace them up with your skates when you're putting them on and then they just flip over and go over the stopper so like i kind of i love sewing like that like quick little Mm -hmm. projects that you're like I can make that myself. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. So well, awesome. cool. Let's talk so and tell because a funny thing <laughs> happened. Um, last episode, we asked what fabric manipulation technique you are excited to learn more about. And for whatever reason, we didn't get a lot of responses. <laughs> and we think it's maybe because everyone's just out in their yard dying and painting and stamping and printing and they just didn't have enough time to answer us um so that's that's what we're gonna go with but it's totally okay (laughs) um i was i'm totally like taking some next steps with some um fabric painting and um just thought that was a fun episode and uh it's totally okay that we didn't get a lot of responses oh yeah yeah um you are under no obligation to feed our curiosity totally (laughs) <laughs> totally. But yeah, like, but I think open invitation anytime you want to answer that question, just let Absolutely. us know. Um, so fun, fun things. And this week we wanted to ask you, what's your favorite skirt style and pattern? And we'll just keep the skirt sojo and inspo um, going. It'll yeah. be it'll be awesome conversation. So let us know. Um, you can comment on our show notes page. You can email us or answer our question when we post at So and Tell Pod on Instagram. Let us know. Favorite skirts. Favorite skirts. Wow, you guys, this conversation was really interesting. It was. Can we do this again for like pants? Yeah. Totally. Because I and feel like, like this mm-hmm. this did get me in the mood to sew for fall. And I'm definitely I it happens every year. Like I never really <laughs> want to cut myself off from summer sewing. But so these kind of conversations really help, like kind of get me moving on from summer, mm-hmm. sort of. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe we'll do like, yeah, the fall fashion recap. Yeah. And then we can move. Yeah. So we'll like gear us up for fall sewing. Uh for sure. Cause I'm kind of getting like, you know, I'm getting there i did you a feeling lot of it so- yeah i am a little bit yeah i haven't done any of my summer sewing yet you guys nope. <laughs> there's still time there's still time i don't know i'm just so i i quarantine is not yeah. doing well for my sojo i think um but that's okay yeah i totally i okay. am an, i am under no obligation to produce no. things for myself and I just have to remember, if I don't feel like doing it, it's okay if I'm not doing it. Exactly. And the summers can last. I know in here, uh, in Toronto, it's yeah. like hot until the end of September. Yeah, absolutely. So we still got, totally. we still got yeah. time, for sure. Oh, I know. Yeah, we'll definitely know. have, we'll probably have hot days into October sure. here. Um, or at least fairly warm. Oh, yes. oh yeah. Um, <sighs> mm-hmm. All right, guys. Cool. Great Absolutely. conversation, though, you guys. That All right, you fun. guys, uh, yeah, skirt it fun. up and uh, happy stitching. Skirt it. Skirt happy it. Stitching. Happy stitching. <laughs> For links to everything we talked about in this episode, go to our show notes page at sodaily.com slash sewandtell. If you want to get in touch with us, you can email us at sewandtellpodcast at goldenpeakmedia.com or visit us on Instagram at sewandtellpod. Answer the Sew and Tell question, tell us your sojo, or just leave us some feedback. If you enjoyed our show, please subscribe on your podcasting platform of choice. And please leave us a review, ideally a good one, because that helps listeners like you find our podcast. 
and tell your sewing friends about us too. Thanks for listening and happy stitching. Sew and Tell is produced by Meg Healy, Amanda Carestio, and me, Kate Zeinard. Our consulting producer is Ron Doyle and our executive producer is Jared Mayer. Today on the podcast, we are talking all about skirts, summer skirts, winter skirts, best skirt fabrics, favorite skirt patterns, and Meg's recent skirt Patterson. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> skirt, skirt Patterson. Patterson.